Yo, welcome back to the Red or Blue Pill channel, people. If you know what we do is go through creepy TikToks that make you question reality. If you like what you see, don't forget to sub up, turn on notifications, and let me know your thoughts in the comments. Monday, we will be live streaming the Eclipse, so make sure to turn on notifications for that, because I'm not scheduling it, it's just going live. And for the people that have uh, gracefully said that they're willing to put a camera up for me, um, thank you very much. And what I'll do is I'll meet you in the comments on the live stream, and we'll try and work it out. It's going to be chaotic, but it's going to be fun. Right, with that being said, let's roll the dice. I'm sorry. What? It's not over yet because we've got the eclipse earthquake coming up on Monday. As Deborah Ross was telling us, it's going to be a transformative what? experience for anybody who is in the area of totality. Maybe, maybe just take the day off just to be on the safe side. Earthquake in New York, which is 4.8. Magnitude. The eclipse is on the 8th of the 4th. Mm, just saying. I'm sorry, but the New York earthquake does get a lot bigger. And just real quick, we'll go over some things you probably have heard already, and then we'll go over the scary things you haven't heard. Yesterday, I just shared how lightning hit the hand of Apollo. I mean, Statue of Liberty. And I mean, the hand, the torch. So then we had this 4.8 earthquake. Well, the eclipse is 4.8. And two hours later, Brazil had a 4.8 earthquake. Of course, 4.8. Before we go any further, it's all speculation. It's all legend. It's all my opinion. I also just showed you last week this trail of earthquakes going up the eclipse route. Well, where the eclipse hit was called White House Station. And our earthquake map is off the charts right now. I just showed you in this video that in the last three days, Japan and Taiwan both had big earthquakes. Now, this right here is the scary part to me. This made me reevaluate and relook into the earthquake map. The central mid Atlantic Ridge has had about 10 earthquakes in the last three or four days. Why does that matter? There have been thousands and thousands of people that had a dream that all of the East Coast of New York were underwater. This light blue line is the mid Atlantic Ridge. Now, with really big earthquakes, you'll usually have smaller earthquakes that lead up to them. What would happen if there's a major plate shift in the mid Atlantic Ridge? Maybe things going underwater. I mean, we've literally had like 50,000 earthquakes over the last month. I forget the exact number. And the Earth's frequency has been off the charts. Not to mention five incredibly strong storm paths going right along that line I showed you. Now let me take you back to 1811, which was when they had a total solar eclipse. And then three months later, for four months straight, they had massive earthquakes all around America. But the widely available illustrations we have of this 1811-1812 earthquake literally show things coming from the sky. That's weird. If you haven't by now, you'll eventually find that everything works in perfect patterns. Numbers, letters, frequencies, things happening in the atmosphere. This map is really starting to look plausible, isn't it? Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments. NASA clearly said there were going to be an ellipse during the eclipse. Do you know what an ellipse is? If you don't listen, this should be the most shared video I ever put out. I am going to show you why you do not want to be in the path of totality during this eclipse. And it is because of an ellipse. I can't believe they're getting ready to do this to us. If you ever had a kidney stone too large to be passed, they use a lithotriptor, which is focused energy of an ellipse. Same concept. And this breaks down stones. So what do you think is going to happen when they fire up something as powerful as CERN from one side of the world to the other focusing on the path of totality. This next video should give you a clue of what's going on. Isn't this shape interesting? Each of these two special points of the ellipse is referred to as focus. And together, they're called the foci of the ellipse. Wait, there's more. Elliptical shapes even play a role in a medical device called the lithotriptor. Pay attention to the lithotriptor. Due to its reflective property, it's used to break the kidney stones. 
high frequency shock waves are generated at one focus of the elliptical shaped reflector which gets concentrated at another focus point where the kidney stones are positioned and this helps in breaking the kidney stones come back and please check this video out i just shortened it for for sakes of my video nasa did a press conference there will be an ellipse with the eclipse and they are firing up CERN. And we also know that this goes hand in hand with HARP. So you have a focal point here, a focal point there. And this only works if there is a domed roof. Let that sink in, people. Now, back to business. Now, I've had kidney stones and I've also had one of my kidney stones broken down with lithotripsy which means that they can focus frequency to a specific spot to break things up. I showed you all the path of totality, and I showed you that there would be a new river carved from Louisiana all the way up through New York along the path of totality. And they are going to use an ellipse to accomplish this. Please do not, I repeat, do not be in the total path of totality. Don't, do not. I don't care. Call it fear mongering. Get the fuck away. You are about to die. We've watched other videos where they say ellipse, not eclipse. And someone mentioned it in the comments. They picked up on it. I'm pretty sure thinking it was a mistake. Uh... Hmm. Bitch, no fucking way. Alexa. Alexa, oh my God. Are we going to die on April 8th? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, <laughs> unfortunately, yes. Bitch, oh my God. Bitch, no. It is legit. I tested it myself today, people. You may have watched my short, um, which TikTok. Uh, took down for community breaking community guidelines. How I have no idea. Work that one out. It's the world we're living in. Problem. Child trafficking is massive at this point in time. It makes a billion dollars or more from children being raped, tortured, abused, murdered through many ways. Satanical ritual abuse goes on and what people don't realize the depths of depravity the horrors that go on Jeanette Archer has done massive things to put this message out there being a former survivor along with many others and as Aaron mentioned the likes of Alison Hawkins, Denise Girl, Abby Conlip and others have spread this message about I contacted Alison and said could I speak about the horrors that that Jeanette has gone through. And she contacted Jeanette, and she's more than happy for me to, to say some things about what she went through. Uh, if you want to watch the rest of that video, it's on Maggie Beggs 395 TikTok. Um, but that is a protest going on in the UK at Buckingham Palace. Protect the children. Oh, and just to point out, this video is for entertainment purposes only, people. None of it is verified. And do your own research. You know me, if nobody else is going to say it, Auntie will. Oh, but first things first, Tiki Talk. I'm just kidding. This is all for entertainment purposes only. I got new boots. I do. They're cute. They're Uggs. New boot goofing. Just goofing around. Everything here is speculation. Let's go. If New York City getting hit by a 4.8 earthquake today isn't a sign, I don't know what is, guys. 4.8. 4.8. I don't know. April 8th eclipse. And the Statue of Liberty getting hit by lightning yesterday. Struck by lightning. Because, I mean, guys, come on now. I did a video earlier, and we all do know the truth. The Statue of Liberty is not what they told us she is. She is not a she at all. In fact, it is quite frankly a he, a polyon, Satan himself. If these are not warnings and messages from God that Babylon, oh, that's right, New York City, 
that Babylon itself is getting every single sign known to man under revelation that something big is coming. Guys, I don't know how anything or anyone could say it any clearer. New York City does not get hit by earthquakes often and to suddenly be struck with a 4.8 earthquake the day after the statue of Apollyon, Satan, oops, I mean the Statue of Liberty gets struck by lightning. Guys, it is happening. The signs could not be clearer. It is time to repent, turn from sin, and give your life to Yeshua and Yahweh before it's too late. Honestly, at this point, Yeshua could come back at any time. The temple is being built, the third temple in November. The red heifer is being sacrificed. It is happening. It's almost go time, baby. Yes, this is not a drill. This is what we train for, people. Yeah. Hang on to your britches, guys, because it's about to get real. And if you have Christ in your life, you're not worried one single bit. But if you don't, that's a whole nother story, my friend. But in my All right, let's take a look at CERN. Let's take a look in this building right here. Actually, right outside is a sculpture. And what's that? The geocentric path of the luminaries over the geocentric map. The geocentric map is quite popular with the World Health Organization, the World Meteorological Organization, the International Maritime Organization, and of course, the UN. Remember 666 United Nations Plaza? Remember when we went inside and we seen that United Nations has the flag with the geocentric earth on it? Then we dug a little deeper and we kind of peeked around and we found this conference hall with the geocentric map again and the Pope telling the people, hey, let's pray to Mary that they never go to Darling Park in Sydney, Australia and see this place because what you're going to see is a flat earth fountain. Yeah, with the big old mountain in the center stretching up to the heavens. Uh-oh. <laughs> so those who control the seas, the weather, the land, and the health all use this map as their logo. And CERN, thanks for letting us know what celestial model you believe in. No predictions unless you're a heliocentric model. Look at these predictions. All right, let's take a look at CERN. Let's take so guys, you know, it says in the Bible that there will be many earthquakes in various places. And, um, as you see, it just happened in New York. New York doesn't really have earthquakes. And, uh, we had one in Taiwan, and um, like I said, June 6, there will be an earthquake. Um, I'm not here to scare anybody. Just come to Jesus, repent. The time is near. God said that he would call on to his people and pour out his spirit to confess his return. And that's just what I'm doing. Everybody go worship Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. This guy, he likes a prediction. LA is next. What are you doing? Use your words, what are you doing? I have no idea what happened there. No idea. have been following the restart of the Large Hadron Collider that was expected for April the 8th, then I've got some great news. We're running ahead of schedule and this afternoon we received what we call stable beams for physics. So this is the point where the accelerators are ready to switch to a regular data taking mode and the detectors are ready to collect that data. This is a full three days ahead of schedule thanks to the fantastic work by the CERN accelerator teams. As a particle physicist, this means I will now be busy over the next few months in the control room collecting the data with my colleagues. And as always, I will be busy analyzing that data to 
to see what we can learn about how our universe works on the very smallest scales. And for those who are trying to watch the eclipse on Monday, I wish you clear skies and happy viewing. For those who have been following the restart... Why do I not believe her? Can we just not live? Can we just turn all this stuff off, people? Just turn it off. Let's just live normal lives. Let's just get rid of all technology. Except for YouTube. <laughs> Welcome to the grand opening of our whatchamacallit, which thanks to the lobbying of Lisa Simpson, we built instead of a new baseball stadium. At least the pennant works both ways. Professor Frank will now throw a switch, which will either answer certain obscure questions of subatomic physics or destroy the universe. Oh, my God, Particle. What is it, Professor? You can tell your grandchildren you were here when humanity finally learned that this accelerator is much too small to tell us anything important. Oh, oh. thanks a lot, Lisa. That money could have been used for a war. Black hole! I'm sorry, can we call it that? Yes, it's the preferred term, and most scientists believe that what enters a black hole never comes out. But some think they may be a gateway to other universes. Hey, did it open a pencil bag for me? Help a brother out, DH. Woohoo! Ow! Guys, stop throwing things in the hole! The more you throw in, the bigger and more dangerous it becomes! Stop! This is a black hole, not a lawn and leaf bag. If one more thing gets in there, it could reach critical mass. Welcome, trans-dimensional visitors. We have received your many gifts with gratitude. <laughs> we have built our society around the treasures you have sent. Our most popular magazine is your President's Day mattress blowout insert. Our favorite food is your banana peel. <laughs> and we listen to all our music on the most wonderful device ever created, the Zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Treasures, gifts, you got it all wrong. That stuff is just our own wonderful stuff. Enjoy it. Zoom. It's gold. That to me is gold. I'm driving through Rockdale, driving my Uber. Just finished praying just minutes ago, asking the Lord to show me some direction to keep. It's gold. That to me is gold. First off, first off, first off. That's not normal. <laughs>
That's not normal. That is training for something to come. Uh, Yo, why would Fox say this? Listen to this video. Something to have lived through this, the strongest earthquake in 140 years, John. Look at all that. And it's not over yet because we've got the eclipse earthquake coming up on Monday. As Deborah Ross was telling us, it's going to be a transformative experience for anybody who is in the area of totality. <laughs> okay, so who is Deborah Ross that they just mentioned? Apparently from the Rochester Task Force for the total solar eclipse. So this is her. So I just started investigating. Look, she's got a 13 hour video here. How about she's been planning for the eclipse for years and she's been doing a lot of events. These are the events linked to her. And I was like, hmm, interesting. And then I went to the website and they got like this creepy clock, you know, with a countdown. I don't know. Then I was like, well, remember the other news here I don't know, guys. It's getting weird. What do you think? I watch that again. Stay informed. What do you think? Well, put on your seatbelts, y'all. This looks like the big one they've been warning us about for the last twenty years. Today, the White House was asked directly about this. They refused to confirm nor deny. Also, the Russians said this today, and there are reports from people that there are Russian tanks in Syria on the border with Israel right now. So it looks like a two-front deal. Not good, especially considering that our current administration sold out all of our oil reserves, has made Iran extremely wealthy by handing them billions and billions of dollars over the last few years, and has allowed them to, ar allowed them to arm themselves in a way that they have never been armed. So here we go, y'all the war they've been telling us about, and we are less prepared than ever. Thank you to the current administration. We have a lot to look forward to in the coming week. Hopefully, God willing, this doesn't happen. We need to pray for peace and pray that this does not pop off in the way that it looks like it's going to, because this could be a disaster for the entire world. You think things are bad now? You think things are bad in the Red Sea now? Wait until two large armies are involved. It's going to be a crisis like we've never seen before. I'm going to reiterate, we can't talk about specifics and what we got into, but what I can tell you is what Gresh shared with me in an unclassified setting that I firmly believe in. Um, I believe that he's telling the truth. I think that he is a credible witness. And what I can also say is one thing in particular that really caused me to be concerned about this whole thing is that Gresh had stated to myself, Representative Burchett and another member on the phone, that there were people that were hurt hiding this information and keeping this information safe and or trying to come forward with this information. What I can tell you is I believe that claim after now leaving. How much that's all sound now. Do you think that the administration is sending the right people? Do you think that you guys are actually talking to the right people in these classified? I think that they are sending the correct people on paper. However, there is, uh, and it's become evident that there is an overclassification and that we are continually being stonewalled. My one concern is that we are authorizing money that is supposed to be spent on certain programs, and yet there is compartmentalization in which Congress doesn't have access to oversight in those programs, and that's a problem. Are you more concerned leaving now than you were going in? I, I feel the same. I think that I'm pretty much at the same space that I was. Uh, this entire process has been what facts do we have? Um, again, the credibility of the witnesses is, is incredibly important, and I think that we have very credible people. How much of this is the distinction of saying, okay, there are certain programs that we have that are dark programs that we need to be very careful about letting that information out? Some of that can be attributed to what people have said versus this conversation about Rush and some of the claims he made in the open hearing about non human biologics. You know, as of right now, um, we didn't get into the specifics of that in there, but what I will say is that 
it has become apparent that there is a movement, whether it's within the intelligence intelligence community or not, to prevent us from finding out more information on this. And so we are going to do what we need to do as investigators to continue to pull on whatever strings and see where they lead. I think it's incredibly important to listen to the specific words that Gresh uses. You know, Gresh never said extra terrestrial or alien, he said interdimensional. I think that that's incredibly important because those are the types of things that when we go in there, we, you know, there's just certain things that I think that it's important that you guys listen to on that. On government funding, quickly, I know you voted yesterday. You were, you still voted against. I'm, I'm, I'm this is UIP today. So thank but you guys. Can, can I get clarification? Yes, you said interdimensional. I mean, um, what does that term, is this something that bends time and space? What, is, what are you getting at? I think that Grush, when I at, when I had talked to him on whether these were specifically extraterrestrials or alien in origin, he said interdimensional. He refused to um, address, use certain terms. And I think that's incredibly important because I think that that's really the question we're all wanting to know, right? And so I'm actually going to have a sit down conversation with him and ask him to come back and talk to us directly because it seems that we are getting more information from the source than going into a skiff and then not being able to tell you guys what we're talking about. Is this about. stuff that we just as humans might not be able to understand if it's interdimensional? I think that we can understand it. I think that it's just, it, it's an approach, right? I mean, like, remember, we just now for the first time in history really had Congress have whistleblowers come forward credible that we're telling the entire world that there is something other than human life forms. Grush said that those were interdimensional beings. He refused to use extraterrestrial and alien. I think that's important to note, but I do have to go feed my baby, so thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Whoa, crazy. I think it's weird how everyone seems to think that we can't handle the truth about interdimensional or aliens, like as if our head's going to explode. So everyone is brainwashed and thinking that we can't handle it. I'm pretty sure we can. But people, with that being said, that is the end of the show. Uh, it's oh, I'm tired at the moment. I don't know if anyone else is feeling the same, but it's just I've had a day of just. But uh, I need just to get a video out there, so I've got it out there, peeps. Um, let me know what you thought of the com thoughts in the comment section, and I'll get another one out tomorrow. But uh, have a good afternoon, morning, or evening, depending on where you are in the world. See you later.